Hello, and welcome to the Bearcat News Network. This is Dylan Lee, executive producer. And as much as I hate to have to be in front of the camera again, I just couldn't find anyone willing to host this week's show. Weird, huh? Well, anyway, I guess I'll have to be the center of attention once again as we bring you the third episode in Season 1 of the Bearcat News Network. It's been a great year for CHS football, and under the leadership of an amazing coaching team, we've made it into the state playoffs. Here's a look back at all the highs and lows of the 2012 Bearcat football season. In week one of the Coleman football season, Coleman dominated in our opening game against Walker with a score of 42 to 14. In week two, Coleman traveled to East Limestone where we secured another victory of 30 to 21. Week three brought West Point to Coleman which gave the Bearcats deja vu when the game ended with a score of 42 to 14. During week four, Coleman was faced with a grueling battle against our rival Hartsville, and unfortunately we lost 21 to 14 with only seconds left on the clock. Coleman hosted Madison Academy in the fifth week and demolished the private school with a score of 42 to 21. Week six, the Bearcats barely made it with a score of 21 to 20. Talk about close. This is the first time Coleman beat Russellville in 26 years. This win gave Coach Britton his 100th win as a Coleman High School football coach. Coleman demolished Lawrence County during homecoming. We scored 38 points while our defense gave up zero touchdowns. Great job, defense. Coleman took a trip to Athens in week seven and chalked up another outstanding victory of 41 to 14. In week eight, number one ranked Muscle Shoals came to our house and left us with a loss of 35 to 19. The Coleman Bearcat football regular season came to an end with a trip to center point. Coleman won the game 28 to six. This brought the Bearcats regular season to a respectable eight and two. I'm Hadley Hall with Coach Mark Britton after the last regular season game. How does it feel to be eight and two this year? Really good. I'm, I'm proud of our senior leadership. Uh, I thought our guys did a great job uh, throughout the year. And, uh, you know, coming in tonight, we, we uh, had a lot on the line. We're looking forward. You know, you hope you, they're not looking too far forward to the uh, playoffs. So, uh, real proud of our guys. They kind of jumped out early, to control, and uh, was able to hold on. We got a nice win. That's good. And I noticed that a couple of our eighth graders went in, even our ninth graders went in, so we were doing pretty good today. It's always fun to get all those guys in, and uh, you know, those guys practice hard and they try to get our varsity ready, so when we can get some of our young guys, the JV guys in, uh, you know, it's always a lot of fun, and, and we did get several guys in tonight. It's a lot of fun. And what are you expecting for the playoffs this year? Well, we hope we have a great crowd. We're going to be at Oliver Woodard Stadium Friday night, which is always great to be home. And uh, we've got Arab coming in. It's uh, strong in their region. They finished number three in their region. So uh, we need to be prepared. And if there was one team that you could pick that you had to play in the playoffs, who would it be? Well, you know, it looks like in the bracket we're in right now, we're going to get to play. If, if we can continue winning, we'll get to play uh, Walker in the second round, which is always a big rivalry. That's where our season started. And then, uh, you know, we'd always love to get another, another opportunity to play Hodge. Well, that sounds like we're going to have a lot of reruns, I guess. So. Maybe, maybe. Well, thank you very much. Once again, uh, I'm Hadley Hall with Coach Mark Britton. One of the goals of our show is to shine a spotlight on activities here at CHS that don't get as much attention. And the CHS swim team is full of dedicated athletes. BNN actually managed to catch up with some of these dedicated swimmers at a recent meet at the Coleman Aquatic Center. Here's our report. Hi, I'm Christina Wonka and I'm here at the Coleman Aquatic Center. To others, this is a place of exercise and recreation, but to swimmers, this is like a second home. For one and a half to three hour practices and meets that last from anywhere from three to five hours, Coleman swimmers spend a lot of time here at the Aquatic Center. Hi, I'm Roxanne Orr and believe it or not, 
Pullman High School has a swim team. And I'm here with Christina Wonka, swimmer. How are you today, Christina? I'm doing awesome today, Roxanne. How are you? I'm awesome. So, who is your coach? My coach is Miss Donaldson, the chemistry teacher here at Coleman High School. And what do you admire most about her? I admire that she's strict but understanding with us at all times. Awesome. So, what do you like most about swimming? Well, I love the adrenaline rush during competitions. Um, practice may be hard, but once you cut seconds off your mate events, it's really worth it. So, who are some people on swim team? I'm not really sure who's on the team. This is Crystal Hillis and Chuck Freeman doing backstroke. This is Jessica Lowe and Nikki Kane doing breaststroke. This is Kyle Norris and Madison Smith doing butterfly. This is Noah Price and Chris McAlvin doing freestyle. Roxanne North, Christina Wonka. And this is the Coleman swim team. CHS Robotics is far more complicated than you'd originally think. I mean, at first I thought it was just a program designed to build our Android overlords that would one day rule the world. Surprisingly, I was wrong. Each year presents a unique challenge to robotics teams across the state. And not only do they have to show a working robot that completes the task, but they're also judged in categories like presentation and marketing, even art design. And the whole time they have to adhere to a very strict set of rules. Lots of things to keep up with. In the beginning of October, schools from across North Alabama gathered at Wallace State Community College for the annual Best Robotics Competition kickoff. Here the schools pick up the materials and learn the game rules. Armed with only two boxes of materials, which include wood, duct tape, PVC, duct tape, electronics, duct tape, other small items, and more duct tape, the schools had six weeks to design, build, test, and market a working space elevator prototype. Our robotics team worked many long hours in backyards and garages to design and build the robot. James Hovader was the face of the team. The team bonded together over hot dogs, sloppy joes, and cookies made only from love and kindness by Connor Strickland's grandmother. Sometimes things got a little rough, but the robot was finally ready for demonstration day or demo day. At demo day, all of the teams could come and test the robot on a full-size course. The team was able to see what was wrong, what worked well, and how to change it for the competition.
After demo day, the robot was ready for the competition at the Coliseum at Wallace. The robot had a few problems and had to be redesigned. The team had trouble in the first few rounds, but through duct tape ingenuity was able to win a fourth place position out of the 15 original teams. Our pet band, with only 17 people and cheerleaders, helped to win the pet band and school spirit award against the other school. And that's the way the cookie crumbles. This has been Jordan Stanford Johnson with the Bearcat News Network. CHS Band is an award-winning institution, earning top honors and top scores around the state. Let's check in with CHS Band and Christopher Smith, Director of Bands, to see how the 2012 school year is going. Hello, I am John Weeks from the Bearcat News Network, and I am here with this prestigious band leader, Mr. Smith. Mr. Smith, I'm glad you could be with us today. Glad to be here. Glad to be with you. Awesome. Good. Well, I just wanted to ask you a couple questions about the band, how good they are, how they've done so well. I mean, with all of these trophies, they've obviously done fantastic this year and every year preceding. So, first question I wanted to ask is, what all competitions do they partake in? Uh, we uh, participate in usually two to three marching contests throughout the fall. This year we participated in two. Uh, the Renaissance City Marching Classic in uh, 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 Florence and the uh, Tennessee Valley Invitational in Muscle Shoals. And the band did very well at both. Wow. That is awesome. How well did they do? Well, at this uh, contest at uh, Tennessee Valley, which are the trophies behind us, we made superior ratings in all captions. And our uh, dance line and majorettes won best in class. And at Renaissance City in Florence, we won best in class band, majorettes, color guard, dance line, and percussion. And then the band got best in class and also won the division championship. Are your band members even satisfied with anything less than superior anymore? No, that's our mantra. You know, we believe in being superior at all times in life and in performance. So that's, that's our bare minimum is to be superior. With winning everything, I can't imagine how it would be anything less. All right. So if I were to join the band... What would I have to do to be a productive band member? Well, it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of time. you got to be on time. Early is on time, and on time is late. Uh, there's a lot of time commitment and individual practice time on whatever you're doing, whether it be an in instrument or one of our visual ensemble members. All of that takes a great deal of individual practice time, and then there's the group effort as well. Wow. That's a lot of work. I see, them. I see the band a lot in sectionals. They're all throughout the school. Just any time throughout the day, they're just sitting there and playing or they're out on the band practice field. It just seems like they, know they don't sleep. It's amazing. So, okay. So, I was looking around and I noticed that there is this huge trophy over on that side of the room. Um, did you get that this year? Yes, we did. That's about a six foot tall trophy. It's actually an inch taller than me. Uh, so it, it's not quite six foot because I'm only 5'9", but that is our division championship trophy. We competed at Re Renaissance City, which was in Florence, and uh, there were multiple bands in classes 1 through 3A, and that is one of the divisions, and we won the championship. That is amazing. Congratulations, Mr. Smith. One more question. Um, well, I think we've pretty much deducted from this interview and from seeing the band at all of their different competitions and the halftime show that your band is pretty much one of the best in the entire state. They make superior ratings almost anywhere they go, and the music they make is just simply breathtaking. So my final question would be, what does it take to be a band leader, a leader of a band of this caliber and of this size? Well, you just have to work really hard and live up to the expectations of the community, the school, and the students that you work for. It's all about them. It's all about the students. So every day when I get up, I have to try to be the best I can and be superior like my students are. Well, you do very well at that, Mr. Smith. Thank you for taking the interview with us today. Awesome. And this is John Weeks from Bearcat News Network with Mr. Smith of the Coleman Band. Dr. Bolden, Mrs. Hall, Stacy Wren, and the rest of the guidance and administration work very hard to ensure that we have a Veterans Day program here at CHS that honors veterans past, present, and future. BNN reporters managed to catch up with some of our participants from this year's Veterans Day program. Hello, 
I'm Lindsay Barker with Adam Lindsay, who graduated from Coleman High School last year. Adam is a Marine. I'm here to ask him a few questions. Adam, how does it feel to be a Marine? It feels really good. Um, we all are a tight group of family, so no matter where you are, if you meet a Marine, you instantly are bonded to them. They're like family to you, so it's a good feeling. Well, how does it feel to be back home? It feels good. Um, I really miss my family, you know, gone 13 weeks, so it's good to finally see them again and to be back with your friends and to hang out and stuff. So when do you have to go back? I go back November 12th. I go to Camp Geiger, North Carolina for my combat training, and then I'll head to Pensacola, Florida after that for my job training. Hi, I'm Antonio Cipollara here with Andrew Self and Connor Strickland. So, I hear you guys are serving. What branch are you guys serving in? We are serving in the United States Navy. What made you serve in the United States Navy? Well, my grandfather is a big influence on my life, and he served in a submarine in World War II. And uh, he, from the things he told me, it just seemed like something I'd really want to do with my life. Thank you. Connor? Well, it's a family thing and a tradition thing. I feel like I owe a lot to this country, and my father was in the military. His father was. His father was in the military. So it's tradition and wanting to give back. This is Julia Neal and I'm here with Tyler Lord. He has enlisted in the U.S. Army and he went through basic combat training this summer. Tyler, what was the worst part of basic training? Well, as we all know, you go through the gas chamber and uh, I'm pretty sure I died. And that was by far the worst part. And what was the best part? Well, shooting guns and uh, is always fun, but you, you just can't beat blowing stuff up. So I threw two live grenades. It was pretty awesome. Where are you going to basic training at? Fort Sill, Oklahoma. What is your MOS? Thirteen Fox Trent. Fire. Would you uh, you know, explain that a little bit? It's a fire support specialist. Sits with the artillery, calling in rounds. I'm here with Brindley Warnke, who is cadet captain of Coleman ROTC. Brindley, what are your plans after you graduate from high school? I'm planning on attending Virginia Military Institute with a Marine Corps scholarship to do ROTC at the college level. I'm here with Zane Nicholas, who is enlisted in the Marines. What are your plans after the Mar Marines? I plan to do 20, or 20 plus years and retire. Now I'm here with Jacob Hendricks, who is enlisted in the U.S. Army Reserve. And can you explain what the ASVAB is? Well, when I took it, it was about two weeks ago. It was on a Wednesday, and it was about like three and a half hours long. It's kind of like the ACT, and it's uh, it maps out like what you're good at, what your strengths and weaknesses are, and uh, what you'd be good at for the military. And uh, like I did pretty well on it, and uh, they gave me a combat medic job. Finally, today we're going to talk about CHS theater. Since I became theater director, it's been one of my personal goals to make CHS theater an important part of the entire Coleman community. Of course, the theater department here and the choral music program have always invited local schools to the Big Spring Musical. But this year, we're also inviting them to our winter show as CHS Christmas Carol Spectacular on November 30th and December 1st. But we don't just like to confine ourselves here to the CHS theater. Like I said, we want to get out in the community. And you've already seen examples of that. You saw CHS Theater at Oktoberfest in our very first episode, and now you're going to get a chance to see CHS Theater in a couple of other locations too. For the last three years, CHS Theater has been involved in what's called the Fairy Tale Ball, which they have right across the street at the primary school. And this year, for the first time, we put together a Veterans Day tour where we go to West Elementary and East Elementary and perform live for their Veterans Day programs, and we put together some special videos for the primary school and Coleman Middle School for their Veterans Day celebrations. So here they are to close the show. This is Dylan Lee signing off. Hey, well, I wrote this song just for you guys, so I hope you all enjoy it. Oh, you all look so beautiful.
If you were locked in a tower, I'd chase after you. And if you, if you were asleep, I'd be the one you'd wake up to. And so let's just put on some plain clothes and dance on the floor. Shut your eyes and just say a prayer. We'll go Take anything to this wonderful ball One thing and nothing else I choose you And I choose you If I could take anything to this wonderful ball One thing and leave the rest I choose you Plain old simple Beautiful sufferings of this revolution and I am willing perfectly willing to lay down all my joys in life to help maintain this government and to pay that debt we're going over the top this afternoon and only God in heaven knows who will come out of it alive I'm in his hands and whatever happens I will look to him in this world and the world to come and if I'm called my regret is that I leave you and my children how is everything in the small town Daddy, have you or do you know where I can get me a good helmet? Boy, do my ears get cold. Jack and I will go on flight about the 20th of this month. They issue flying suits, but we don't get helmets. And my ears nearly come off. I love you always. I wish I could write more down, but I'm not going to because I'm going to come home to you. Love. Strange how short a time I have a second in the difference between life and death. This morning we were talking about how we were only two years different in age and how we both had gotten married before coming to this place. You know, I can still feel this presence as I write this letter and hope that I am able to survive and leave this far behind me. I just hope that his death is not in vain. <coughs> Captain, my captain, our fearful trip is done. The ship has weathered every whack. The prize we sought is won. The port is near. The bells I hear. The, the people all exulting. 
While follow eyes the steady keel, the vessel grim and daring. But oh heart, 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 oh the bleeding drops of red. Where on the deck my captain lies, fallen, cold, and dead. Oh, oh captain, my captain, rise up and, and hear the bells. Rise up, for you the flag is flung, for you the bugle trills. For you they call the swaying mass, their eager faces turning. Here, captain, dear father, the arm beneath your head. It is some dream that on the deck you've fallen cold and dead. My captain does not answer. His lips are pale and still. The ship is anchored safe and sound. He has no pulse or will. My father does not feel my arm. His voyage is closed and done. From fearful trip, the victor ship comes in with objects won. Exult, O shores, and ring, O bells. But I walk with mournful tread. I walk the deck where my captain lies, fallen, cold, and dead. Cots of agony mark death's unmeasured tide. Bear up the battles of harvestry, the Red Cross nurses glide. Look where the hell of steel has torn its way through slumbering earth. The orphan urchins near forlorn and wonder at their birth. Until above them, calm and wise, with smile and guiding hand, God looking through their gentle eyes, the Red Cross nurses stand. brothers. For you the line has held. Your job is done. Rest easy. Sleep well. Others have taken up where you fell. The line is held. Peace. Peace. And farewell. <laughs> 